Wow. Is that loud enough or? Okay. No, the Bible say, wake up, sleepy, sleeper. Okay, I just want to take this opportunity before I want to thank Pastor Ellen, who's not here at the moment, with his beautiful wife, for allowing me and trusting me to stand in this place and to be the mouthpiece of God for us all this morning. And I want to thank, I really forgot your name again, Margaret. Thank you for that announcement. That is, that is very important. Christianity, the heartbeat of Christianity is prayer. That's why you forget everything and start speaking to your creator. I won't be preaching tonight, but I just want to encourage you. We've been having preaching all the time. Every now and then we hear... Man of God, stand up here and speak. But I want to encourage you this morning. That's why I'm going to go back three, four weeks ago when I came here. It seems quiet this morning. Okay, but it's good to hear a voice laughing. I like that. I like people when they laugh. They're happy about the life that is freely given by God. You know, we are targeted people. Do you know that you are targeted people? You are targeted people. You and I are targeted people. Are targeted by the, our common enemy. And he has a lot of ways. I just want to bring into memory John 10 verse 10. It speaks about the enemy, his mission. The enemy, his, his, his secondary purpose was to steal the goodness, the happiness. His first and top priority is to steal the word of God from you. He wants to get the truth away from you. He doesn't want you to know the truth of the word of God. Something happened to me. A few years back, I lost my grandson. He came all the way from England to come and die in front of me. He was in a hospital case. So I made up my mind to look into the word of God. I just don't read the word of God as it is. I want to encourage you. I'm encouraging you. Please look into the word. The word is our life. The word is the one that will hold you and it will move you and it will take you along. This time. I want you to look with me in, Je in, uh, in Matthew. Matthew 24, 45. Who then is the faithful and white, uh, and, and white servant whom his master, who, whom the master has put in charge? Can you get that on? Yeah. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servant in his household? In his household to what? To give them their food at their proper time. To give them their food at their proper time. We are all servants of the Lord. You are a carrier. You are supposed to be contagious. Last few weeks, our senior pastor Ellen was talking about renewing of the mind. That was in Romans. I wrote it down. Romans 12, 1 to 2. Romans 12, 1 to 2. Sorry, guys, I didn't give you before I came this morning. Romans 12, 1 to 2. Here it goes. Somebody remember that? Therefore, I urge you. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. You do the offering. Last week, this is what 
Pastor Ellen said, you can worship here, but what about worshiping God in your different places, in your homes, in your workplace, and where you stand and gather and, and, and have a conversation with your friends. Offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. I'm not here to please anybody, even though I'm encouraging you. The word of God is the word of God. No more, no less. That's the bottom line. So if we are, sometimes we try and appear in our eyes the word of God. Stop it. That's the word of God. It has been established in heaven to be forever. When God speaks it, that's it. Oh, I think. Oh, uh, no. It's the word of God. The word of the creator, the alpha and the omega. The beginning and the end. Who holds your life at his hand. It says in the book of Isaiah that you, you, each and every one of us. He said like this in the book of Isaiah. Can a woman, can a mother forget his son? Can a mother forget his son or his children? Can a mom? No way. A mom can fight to death. But God said this. Yes, she can. But I can never forget you. Look. He said, look, I engraved you in the palms of my hand. You are engraved in the palms of God's hand. It's and every one of us that is here today. You are as important to God as Jesus is important to God. The value of Jesus Christ to God Almighty is the same value that he has. Get it down. The word of God. The word of God is not for our head knowledge. I want to encourage you. The head, it's not for our head knowledge. Last week, no, I think the week before last, or before that, verse two of that of that uh, Romans twelve, and do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen to this. Then you, then you, look at that word. Then you will be able to test and approve. It is you, not God. You, you know, when I came to Australia, there were, you know, it reminds me of this uh, security. Uh, when you come to Australia, when I come to Australia, there are people who are checking my luggage and my bags, even though I just brought two bags. One was for my Bible, the other one was for a few clothes. I checked, I said, Lord, please don't let anything that is, what you, what's that word, contraband? Contraband that is contraband. It will decide whether I'm eligible to, to go forth or take another step away from that airport and go into the Australian uh, people's land or is it the next flight back to Fiji because I brought in something. <coughs> that you will be able to test and approve what is God's will, His good and pleasing and perfect will. You. So you see, you have a job to scrutinize what goes and allows you in your life. You're the one. You will allow and disallow. The only way you can be alert to that is getting down into this. This is our life. This is your life. This is your generation's life. Let me ask you one question this morning. Do you love your children? All those with, who brought their children into church this morning. Can you answer me this morning? Do you love your children? Do you love your kids? Yes. Thank you. Get into the word. Come to prayer. And another thing that caught my attention was what I was told by Pastor Graham. I know Pastor um, Ross. We met together a lot of times and uh, he came to Fiji and we met and we spoke. He saw me two weeks back or last week? Last Sunday. What you doing here? I say I'm contagious. I can't keep this word to myself. You see, the people at the airport, they forgot something. When I entered the airport, I told my friend's wife, 
Thank you, Shelly. When I, when I went past, I told Shelly, Shelly, I'm hungry. When I left Fiji, there was only 25 cents Fiji money in my pocket. The people overlooked that because if, the, if I was there and I said, how come you come to this land with 25 cents? There must be a dangerous connection with you. Maybe you're a money laundering person. They forgot that. And I said, Lord, tell them, make them take me to one room because the first person who's going to ask me, I'm going to tell them, do you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? I'm contagious. I can't keep still. I can't keep quiet. I can't keep quiet. What's the song we sang this morning? How can I keep it inside? My God is alive. Hallelujah. Give a clap offering to the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Can I ask you that? Thank you. And give one for yourself. You are blessed people. You, you people are so blessed. Wow. You know, just uh, last week I went to the dump. The dump in Balena. Yeah. I went there. When I went there, I had an experience, an awesome experience. I saw stuff. And back home, I had this small kitchen that I made for my wife. It's actually a few meters away from our wooden house. I mean, maybe 12, yeah, maybe 12 to 15 meters. It got burned twice. I couldn't find materials to build my wife a good kitchen. But you know what happened to this kitchen? It stood. So I told my wife, you've got to demolish it. It stood. You've got to demolish it. She said, no. You just clean all the charcoals and clean everything. I'll keep on cooking there. Three weeks before I left for Australia, it got burnt the second time. It still stood. It still stood. That's what hurts me because I saw a lot of things. I think that I can build a good kitchen for my, for my wife. It's, I, swear, man, I told Paul, Paul, what are people doing? This is throwing stuff. I want you to realize and tell your children they are blessed. Sit them and make them understand. Oh. So that they can tell their children. I've been to conversation with a lot of people. By the way, how many minutes do I have? How long? Okay, here we go. Last week we were told, you know that you are a spirit being. When you come to church, when you come to church, don't forget to lift your hands. Don't be frightened. Don't be in intimidated. Somebody tells me, one, twice they told me. Oh no, that's, that's the way it is with our church. That's our culture. You know, the word of God said that you have nullified the word of God by your culture, by your tradition. We are islanders. We got tradition. We got cultures. You name it. You name it. But when we understand that we are free people, boy, stop us. Try and stop us when it's time to praise. Try and stop us when it's time to worship. My Lord is, my God is alive. How can I keep it inside? This is what Jeremiah said. I've decided not to speak of his name anymore. But his word was in, that was in my heart was like fire. It was all locked up in my bones. How can I keep it? It's like fire locked up in his bones. The word of God. I got down to the word and I start to see words. That have been spoken by God. In Hebrews 4.12. Hebrews 4.12. You understand and you know that. It says that the word of God is alive. For the word of God is alive and active. Sharper than any, any double-edged sword. It penetrates even the dividing soul and spirit. Joints and marrows. It judges thoughts and attitudes of the heart. You know the frightful thing about this God? Do you want to know? The frightful thing about this God, as you sit right there, as you sit right there, he knows what's in your mind and what's in your heart. As you sit right here. 
sitting right there. And I will do this. And I will invite you to close your eyes with me. Close your eyes just for a moment. If you can hear my voice, please do not ignore this. The psalmist said, create in me a new heart. Create in me a new heart, O oh God. And take not the Holy Spirit away from me. Speak to him just for this 60 seconds. Speak to him. Recommit. Recommit your life unto God. If you are here for the first time, tell him, Lord, I'm here. I don't know anything about you, but help me, Lord. Hallelujah. For the word of God is alive and active. This word of God in, in the Psalms 118, 97, I think so, 87 or 89. Now, oh, you see this book? This book has no painting, has no photographs, no nothing. It's only full of words. Full of words. Nothing but words. Last week when Pastor Ross was here and he said, Do you think, what do you think about the people for so many years, so, so, thousands of years? They've They've, they've, they've given the life of keeping that gospel intact. It costs lives. Wives losing their husband. Husband losing their wives. People losing their family. Cut, beheaded for their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Just to get this to you. To you. To you and to me. See the Bible contains the word and the mind and the plan and the purpose of God for men. Pastor Ellen said, uh, okay, this is what Pastor Ellen said before I get into the, the other one. He said, don't forget to lift your hands. Lift your hands, you're a spirit being, there's a connection. When you lift, lift your hands, there's a connection. There's a spiritual connection that is happening. See, the power in the word of God, I directed. When I speak to you, I don't speak to you like this. And the word of God said, I'm not turning my back. I'm directing the word of God to you. It's spoken, it's direction. It's, it's directive, the word of God. The instructions of God. The information of God. That is what this book is all about. We are born to die. It's in the plan of God. Don't be frightened of death. It's just another window. Cuts you from time. It ends of your time, but it enters you into eternity. Why are you looking at me like that? I am frightened. I am sort of frightened again. I'm afraid. Anyway, fear, you know what fear stands for? Anybody can tell me? Fear stands for this. False evidence appearing real. So the Bible says this. Your enemy is like a lion. It's like a lion. It's not a lion, but it's like a lion. He's the one who's, who is instigating and pumping fear into your thoughts. But when you are full of the word, you'll know him. You'll know when he's Christ. You're the one who's correct. No, no, no. You're not allowed in here. When you lift your hands, things happen in the spiritual realm. When the Israelites were fighting and Moses standing, sitting on the hill, there was Caleb and Hur. And Joshua was fighting every time they lift. Moses had the Israelites won the battle. So lift your hands. Don't hold your hands down. Open your mouth and praise God. The words of Jericho came by the sound of the people of God. Just the sound. They were told just to shout. Hallelujah. Just a shout. So when you come and shout,
inside there, I don't know what you came here for, but I came here to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, join with me. Just to enjoy the presence of God. This is what Moses said. If your presence doesn't go with us, we will never move. But how can you go move when the spirit of the living God is being tabernacled inside of you? We tell it inside of you the power. The one that hovers upon the water before creation. How can you keep still? In a dark world where, where the only thing that was hovering above the water was the spirit of the living God. Don't you know that you are in the temple of the spirit of the living God? Don't you know? You are so don't see them. You are you are a different kind of people. You're a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. Thank you for bringing your Bible. <laughs> Thank you. You know this gathered before. Before they were well known as what the word is to be called self -ins. You agree with me? Okay. When you say self, men will know. It's something to do with police. Self. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. It just wraps around you. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Some advertisement went like this. You got the whole hand. Let's see. Anything you want. And uh, if, I, if I remember if I am correct, Pastor Intelligence, Pastor Elsie, yeah. get one of these books in your copy and encyclopedia. And remember you say your house is there. This is the book of life. It was said to Joshua, I know you know. Joshua 1, verse. Thank you. Somebody read it. <laughs> Let not this book of law what? Depart from your brain. Depart from your heart. Depart from your yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. See, the spoken word of God becomes the written word of God. It was preserved. It was sailed through the oceans to reach you. Which me out there in the islands of Fiji, one rock to Solomon, <coughs> the big blessing land of Australia, blessed land, <coughs> written down to be read by people, people like you and me. So that this word, listen to this, this is very important, I'm going to say it only once. So that. That written word that is written down in the book. He never says cell phone. This is God. He knows about the cell phone. He, he, he would have said that. But in the book of Malachi he said. When, God speak, when, when the children of God speaks. When they sit down. When they gather together they speak. God sees. And he said let a book be written. Let a book be written. When children of God they talk. Let a book. The written word of God. The spoken became the written word. The spoken word became the written word. The written word became. It became a living word when you and I read, possess it, take hold of it. And don't let the devil in John 10 10 to come and steal it. In Genesis it says, be careful, sin is crouching at the door. You got your word. English word crouching. And if I can act in curtains, just wait. Just waiting at the door. It desires to have you. It desires to have you. See! It's crouching at the door. It desires to have your word. Let me find. Take it out. It doesn't want you to take it out. He wants to rip it out of you. He wants you to stay the same. But you are made for greater things. Amen. We are made for greater things. 
That's the role of all the people. One time better for one. Born for more. And this is what the word of God said. You do more, bigger things, greater things. You're a believer. You heard the word of God and you believe. But Jesus said this. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? And what? Oh, I'm not doing it. See, the word of God is all action job, action words. You act upon the word of God. That's why she said, if you love me, keep my the only way we keep our command is keep God's command. Jesus, what Jesus said is keep doing. Do whatever he says. Glory to God. So many markers I made yesterday. Somebody told me once, your book, it's like a cabinet. Full of pieces of paper. Oh, those are my markers. Why don't you buy something that is appropriate? How could I do that? Anyway, have you got Psalms 118? You need a mic? Yeah, you? Okay, here it comes. 118. Mm. 89. You need a mic? Somebody with a big voice, they can read that, please. 118. Let's all read it. Verse 89. That's why I said, stop op opinionizing the word of God. 118 verse 89. Psalms 119. Yeah. Come on, Greg. Forever your word stands firm in the heavens. It's being established to be forever the word. That's why Jesus said heavens and earth, heaven and earth will pass away but my word. But my word. Excuse me, Pastor. Uh, how many more minutes do I have? That's good news. We have only one day to come. We have only one day. You can have the six days to yourself. Go, go surfing or something. But one day, give it to the Lord. Yeah, that's what God said. My son, give me your heart. So only today, give him your heart. Hallelujah. Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. What God says about you, listen, what God says about you, what he has already proclaimed about you, stands. Stands. No matter what other people say about you, no matter what other people write about you, no matter whatever they do about you, they can never take away what God has bestowed upon you. It is our duty as children of God to hear the word of God. That is why we are, we are believers. We heard the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. We heard it. None of us here have seen Jesus. But I want to tell you one experience I had in my life. What if a doctor, a senior, the most senior doctor in the ICU emergency department of your hospital, big hospitals you have in Australia. And we have two hospitals in uh, two cities in Fiji. And he came to me and he said to me, this is about my daughter. And he said to me, I'm sorry to tell you this, but we're gonna put your daughter on the machine 
As soon as the machines break down, that's it. Couldn't do anything with all the gadgets that are fixed on my daughter who, is, who was about 31, not married. Blood still stripping up. And I'm, to, I'm so used to this, taking these towels around. Because we Fijians, we, we sweat easily. Yeah. Just most of the time, sitting in the plantation, cassava plantation, finished from weeding, we still sweat. So hot. That's what the doctor told me. It jerked me. I've lost one grandson, not my daughter. No. Because I've made up a point. I've made a decision to look into the word. To see the word. I said, Lord, not my daughter. I know who you are. I know you. I know who you are in me. And I'm in you. I know. You're mine and I'm yours. I know. But that, even though that, I'm still a human. Tears just come out of me. I'm a very strong person. And if I say, and if I'm given the opportunity to say, to, to talk about my testimony, you'd be surprised. How come this man is standing up here? You'd be surprised. But you don't want to know that. But I'm thankful to this almighty God. His hand reached out. And he picked me. And he pulled me out from where I was. Couldn't do anything. My wife wasn't at my side. Yes. Strong man, you know. Macho man going around doing this, doing stuff. Doing the man stuff. Ah, you know. Yeah. When God does something that really touches your life, tears automatic come. But I'm thankful that God sees the tears and he says that he's the keeper. He collects them. <clears throat> so my wife came a few hours later and she said, she asked me, how is it? I just looked away and turned away and I looked back, she saw my eyes full of tears. She, she just came and hold my hand. I told her, go. It's a few hours left now for them to take, to transfer her to the ICU. So they went. So she went, she spoke. With all those gadgets fixed onto my daughter's body and her nose and her mouth, blood still comes out. I go and kept on wiping. The doctor said, you're not allowed to do that because that's not hygienic, that's not clean. But anyway, cut the long story short, they took her. They took her then. I saw my wife lean over and whispered something into her ear. But all the time I was speaking in tongue. I was, telling, I was speaking in tongue but I was praying with my mind to God. And God knows our thoughts. That's the most wonderful thing about it. When you are being cornered and you don't want people to hear your voice. You're speaking in tongue and, you know, and you're just praying silently. He knows with your mind. He knows what your thoughts are. He knows it. I was praying. I was praying. I was telling God, God, I'm going to stand on your word no matter what. I'm going to stand. It's your word. I take it. You know, there was a song that was sung here last week. I take your word for it. You know, the song. When I saw that, Lord, you were just reminding me. Oh, you know. Yeah. Then they went. It was about 6.30 in the evening. They transferred to the ICU. So my wife was uh, going behind the trolley and they went to the elevator or the lift, not the elevator. Is it the elevator? It's a lift or elevator. It's the same thing? Is it the same thing? Elevator and the same. What, what's this thing that goes that we stand on? Oh, escalator. Oh, thank you for helping me there. No, I'm frightened of the escalator. She knows. When I, be, and I, got, when I got off the airport, just sidetrack a bit. I got off the airport, I was waiting. 
And she went, and I remember how she stepped in. It took time. And with my bag, and I, we were going. I was worried, not of where I started, but I was worried about what's ahead because I'm, I'm going to stand. Because the last time I experienced that, I just, it just pushed me, and I fled. And people were looking, hey, this man. You know? But anyway, that too has a message. Sometimes in our journey, sometimes in our journey with the Lord, we are so focused on the destination that we forget about the journey. We watch on your left, watch on your right. When we are focused on our destination, we forget. We forget the things that we are supposed to stand for and to do for our brothers, for our family who are here. Freely we have been given, freely give. And sometimes we are so conscious about our journey that we lose focus on the destination. God bless you. I see you watching me. That's what David, David did. He eyeballed Goliath. I'm here in the name of the Lord. I'm standing here on his name, but it's actually him behind me. You have to deal with him. I'm going to cut your head off. Okay? Anyway, before she goes, when she entered, we couldn't see. We, we just stood outside the glass, and all this machine was fixed onto my daughter. When the machine breaks down, that's it. Make preparation. Fijian people, when somebody's almost dying, buy the bulls, buy the cows, and everything, get everything ready. And I asked my wife, what did you tell her? I saw you leaning over and speaking into her ear. This is what my wife, she turned to me and I, this is what I told her. It's not the ICU. I don't know what ICU stands for, but this is what she tells her. It's not ICU. God is saying, I see you. And God is seeing you. Whatever you are going through right now, my friend, Right now, whatever you are going through, God is knowing. He's an all-knowing God. Whatever you're going through, no matter. Maybe don't look at your bank statement. Look at your God. Don't look at your, your business going down. Look at God. Look at God. From 6.30 down to the next day, which is uh, Saturday to Sunday. Sunday, 4 o'clock, we were all there to see her. We just came to the hospital. 3 o'clock, the girl just set up in the ICU. Boom! And the doctors and the nurses, they start running around. Get down, you're not supposed to. She was yelling, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. That's the God we serve. Hezekiah told God, God, remember when I used to walk before you, Lord. Remember when he was told, you're going you're gonna to die. From that sickness, you're going to die. But he turned his face against the wall and he said, Lord, remember when I used to walk before you. Thank you for always leading on Sunday. Keep it up. That is God. And they start running around. They start running around. The doctors came. Hey, sit down. No, doc, I'm okay. I'm okay. Then they, then they, 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 they sort of examine her. I wanna, this is, I'm encouraging you. Please, talk to God. Anyway, God asks us to pray with him. Jesus asks for one hour. You cannot afford to say there's no time for prayer. My friends, church this morning, saints, you cannot afford to have a five minutes of prayer, or ten minutes or fifteen minutes. No. Jesus said this. Can't you stay with me for one hour? Thank you for reminding the church this morning. Thank you for challenging the church this morning. They, they examined my daughter and the doctor said, yeah, she's good. She's all right. 
Then they examined her for another two or three hours. Then they told her, on such such time you are being transferred. God's timing is the best. He always reminds us all the time. Hallelujah. God's word is forever. Anyway, let's get back to that phone you have. That, you know, literally if you see your phone, it has your diary. It has your, what you call? You know this uh, book that has all the numbers? What you call that? Directory. You got a directory and you have movies that's mean, you have a screen. Just imagine bringing all that. You have news, pay, you know, news you read. You know? And you bring a newspaper, a newspaper, a directory, and you bring it to Sunday. Every Sunday and you bring a whole lot of a move over. You can't come and sit here because my screen is here, my newspaper is here, and you have to send a message. That's mean you have a typewriter or something you have to write on. God was very precise when he says the book. And uh, I, I'm not saying that, listen, I'm not saying that your phone's bad. You can be easily tempted. That's why, you know, remember, some, uh, Pastor Ellen was saying that, you know, during the preachings, and uh, somebody was on Facebook in the church while preaching was going on. You know, this devil... Satan, he doesn't take a, he doesn't rest. He doesn't take a break. When there's break in your vocabulary, expect breakdown. Breakdown is just around the corner. It's very hard to stop. When there's no church ever, this is Christmas season and we maybe we probably start on 25th of January. It's very hard to bring the people. It's, you know, it's like a push start on Monday morning. It's a Monday morning. It's a push start. And it starts to go. No? Then on Wednesday, it's all right. We're getting the groove. Yeah, we're getting it. Right. Let's go. Okay? But it's always be a push start at the beginning. Lifting holy hands. How much longer, Pastor? Five minutes? Five minutes? Which, uh, was that? Okay, let's just stand up for a while. Stand up. Let's stand up for a while. Let's stand up for a while. Hallelujah. Okay. Stretch those legs. Because I'm going to, I'm just going to, give me another, another five minutes or ten minutes or so. Okay. Okay. Sit down. Yeah, nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Last one I'm going to encourage you is the same thing that uh, Maury, Margaret? Margaret? Yeah. Margaret say, pray. Pray. Could you please Put up Romans 13.11. The book of Romans 13.11. In the book of Isaiah, well, they're going to put up Romans 13.11. And do this, understanding the what? Everybody say the present time. The present time. Right now while you're sitting here. Understand it. Understand this time. The hour has already come for you to what? Wake up. Wake up. Turn around to somebody and say, wake up. Wake up. I bowl them and say, wake up. Wake up. From your what? Your slumber. Because what? Your salvation. Hallelujah. Your salvation. Our salvation is what? It's nearer than the what? In the book, in the last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 2. 
Revelation chapter 2. Thank you guys. Verse 3. Uh, no. Yeah. Chapter 2. Revelation. Chapter 2. Verse 4. Revelation. Yet these are all against you. You what? You have forsaken your first love. We all have now and then come down to a level since the first time you experienced Jesus. Now in that Romans 13, 11, our salvation is near. Are we going to think of ourselves only? I said when you, when you are focused on the destination, we tend to lose focus or to be conscious, unconscious about things that are happening around our friends, their family, their children. Yet they come to you and to I. And they share their problems. This is happening to my children. This is happening to my family. Let's get back into our first love. You know, the first time that I met Jesus, well, that's another story. That'll take more than five minutes. So, But I said, Lord, I'm going to go for you. Since my daughter got saved, I promised myself there's nothing else going to stop me. I'm talking about God. We have fallen. We lose focus because we are unconscious of those people and the happenings that are around us. Because we are conscious of the destination. We are so focused on the destination or on our journey or we are conscious of our journey. We lose focus on our destination. I'm just going to call her. Call the worship team come. I want us to stand. Now we're going to do something. Stand. We'll stand as a people. Do you know that you have an anointing? As you stand here, you have an anointing from the Holy One. All of us have an anointing. You have an anointing. Each and every one of us. Children are not being left out. God calls Samuel in the house of meeting. So no matter where the children are playing, somehow or the other, things are being planted. Things of the spirit. Things of the spirit are not being taught. They are caught. Yeah, Could you please just play softly? Right here, right now. We all gonna pray for this place. The word of God said, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. You are the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. We are all. Hallelujah. Close your eyes. You maybe you know a friend, you know a family that's going through a lot. Children. Marriages, relationship, I had friction. Speak to God, He hears you. I want you to speak to God. I ain't gonna pray. You are the one who's gonna talk to God. Ooh. We know you are here. We know you are here, Lord. We know, we know you are here. Oh, oh, oh. Lord, these are the prayers of your people. Lord, these are the prayers and the cries of your children, Lord. 
mighty God. Yeah. Don't let anything hinder you pouring your heart out to God, whatever it is.